guys, uh, Daniel Martin Pesce doesn't need an intro. He is like heavy hitter in Quill. So today he's going to show us some tips and tricks on how he does wind effects. Take it away. Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Martin, like you, like Goro said. <laughs> and today I want to talk about a system or technique to create effects on a piece of geometry like a cape or a flag or the hair and to give the illusion of wind uh, this is this is an old scene that i did uh, this is all animated by hand frame by frame and even i did the cape i believe i have a cape here um, from the lion so this cape was animated uh, completely by hand frame by frame and this is a good way to do it as well, but the way I'm going to show you gives you a more realistic feel. And it doesn't take away your your, your creativity. You're still going to model and create the, the, the deformations the way you want. So let's start slowly by introducing, uh, pro I mean, probably everybody knows this. I'm going to delete this stuff. So it's kind of unnecessary for now. I'm going to uh, introduce the the system of uh, the which is the base of this technique is basically the system of baking transform animation, right? Uh, for you, uh, I mean, I explained this and also Jari uh, covered this technique in other streams. Um, but just a quick refresher. Uh, what uh, what we do with them um, with let's say to bake transform keys uh, the simple explanation is for example okay I'm gonna do just one I didn't prepare this by the way I'm just gonna improvise a lot you guys so I have this uh, line and uh, let's say and uh, I just to quickly uh, remind everybody um i'm gonna make uh, this line is inside of this uh folder called cape well uh yeah it's gonna be a cape later but just just a very quick refresher so uh we add a transform key keyframe and that allows you to just animate this in a linear fashion like We might have lost your microphone, Daniel. We can't hear you anymore. Me now? Yeah, no, you're back. Okay, so we have this simple animation, right? It's transform keys animation, and you can just do it by setting keyframes, right? Very, very simple. So uh, what baking means? Baking means that uh, you, you can um, convert this into frame by frame. So to do that, you have to create a sequence. And the sequence needs to be on the top. And then you put this animation that we just did inside of the sequence. Let's call this uh, Rick, right? And then the sequence has to loop. And in order to loop, you select the last keyframe, you go back to the sequence and you hit the loop button right here. So it loops and once it's looping, you select this the, the sequence and bake it. Boom. And now we have the same movement that we had before. And this uh, this hiding the rig just to not to 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 not show the original piece. And it's gonna show you the result, the baked result. And this is what we have. We have a baked animation every frame is a different geometry that is happens to be moving on that direction yeah quickly to add uh, for newbies here is basically when you use transform keyframes you're just manipulating the transforms of a single object so basically mm -hmm. the object doesn't change if you do frame by frame animation and like in this case he baked it each frame because becomes an individual 
um, object. Geometry, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. yeah, the difference between this, this here, and the baked. The baked is every single frame is a geometry right now. As opposed to this one, it's just one geometry, but it happens to be moving because we added some keyframes in there, right? So the concept of baking is really useful because once we bake it, we can do a lot of stuff with it. So as you can see here, I turn on my onion skinning and you can you can choose to, to see all the frames. So we can see all the frames here. And thanks to this option, select all frames and click select all like that. Thanks to this option, I'm able to select all the geometry in time. So all the uh, exactly 61 frames, I have all the 61 geometries selected right there. So with the grab tool, you deform this like that. You make a little mountain. And when you scrub your animation, you can see that uh, that uh, movement, that deformation that I did with the grab tool it stays with all the frames. So every time that little geometry goes through that area that I manipulated, it deforms and it goes through that deformation. So using that basic concept, we're gonna create wind effects. <laughs> and there's a lot more that you can create with this technique. Eh? You can just do, you can use that for many other reasons for many other different animations. But in this stream, I'm just gonna focus on that, on the wind. So I wanna do a cape uh, for the lion, right? So let's create, uh, let's just get rid of this for, for now. Get rid of this keyframe, and here I'm gonna start from from scratch for you for you guys to see exactly. So I'm just gonna call this geo geo. I'm just gonna call this geometry. This is gonna be the cape. But hang on, I'm just gonna call this rotation. Just to to be clear to what it is, because in this folder it's gonna contain the animation of a rotation. Uh, I'm gonna explain why. And this is where the actual geo is gonna be. So the geo of the cape, because I want I want the lion here. I want the lion to have a cape floating. So I'm just gonna have a pretty decent geo, um, amount of uh, triangles. I'm gonna make it pretty dense. So don't get scared if you see a lot of Density is okay. We, we're not talking about optimization in this class. We're just talking about making cool wind effects. <laughs> we'll talk, we can, we can always optimize this later. But let's just make these really dense. And just put in this and repeating, make it pretty complex geometry here. And this is going to be the base, the cloth, basically, of my cape, right? I know some people out there has animated some characters with a cape. Um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, uh, I mean it always looks, it, look, it looks always so cool to have this kind of wind flowing. Um, make it like look really epic, right? So I'm I'm putting these caps here just to kind of make it clean so we don't see those little points. And I think that's all I need for now. Done. Uh okay, so notice that I'm doing all of that on the grid. I did that with this tool and then holding the left trigger so it's always aligned to the grid. So that helps me also for what I'm gonna do. So in other in the previous example that I show you, I I did the instead of a rotation, I did the movement side to side. But the problem with that technique is that even if you do a transformation and a wave, it's very hard to make it loop. 
it's very hard to make that animation go back to frame one and connect sim uh, seamlessly, right? But inspired by Jerry, I realized that if you do a rotation instead of a, a linear movement, that allows you to have your the loop seamless, and you'll see why. So let's see. Let's. So this is going to be the center of my rotation. So I'm going to just kind of make it more or less not exactly in the center, maybe a little bit far far from the center. And let's start uh, rotating this geometry, right? We have to do an animation that rotates and it's an infinite loop. So in order to do that, the best way is to go by increments, right? Um, I'm going to use maybe increments of 20 frames. I have, if you click here, you can see the, the frame number. <coughs> so let's go to frame number 20 and make a new keyframe here, right? And then to do increments of rotation, uh, as you know, you can just use the, the right trigger in the axis. The index finger trigger. The index finger trigger on the right hand. So that creates uh, increments of rotation instead of rotating freeform, right? So that allows you to create very specific uh, rotations. So let's do the same 20 frames later, number 40. And one, two, three, right? You didn't uh, set a keyframe. And I have to do a keyframe. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. You changed that on now. You yeah. changed that on. Yeah. yeah, it's recommended to have this on for this process. So I'm going to have it on now, the recording. And let's do this again because I messed up, right? Did I mess up? No, you have to just revert that one. Yeah, to, yeah. there you go. Yeah. So let's go back to number 40. And that. And now two, 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 three times. And it does perfectly uh, 180 degrees. And now let's go about 20, uh, 60. And same thing. And let's go to uh, 80, right? 20, 20, 20. This may be a little fast. This may be a little fast now that I think about. Yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty, uh, maybe, too, maybe too fast. Let's go instead of 20, let's do. Um, Let's do 40, let's do 40, you know, 40 increments of 40. So, so this is a little tricky now just to do this. I wish it was easier to start. So 40 and now this, no, hang on. 40 is going to be too much. 40, 80. Well, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it with 40. It's going to be on frame number 80. Uh, uh, 80 by um, plus 40. Uh, Goro, 80 plus 40. 120, dude. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really, really bad with my. So. And 160, Good. right? Yeah, 160 no, is a good number. No, it's too slow. <laughs> no, no, I think it's good that it's slow because we want that kind of nice wind slow, flowing. Slow wind, yeah. Yeah, and, we're gonna, and this is also the number of frames we're going to get baked. We're going to get 160 frames at, uh, at the end of this. So. so now we have a nice rotating motion that is perfectly circle. Uh, it's all on linear. So it, all of these keyframes are linear, right? So that uh, allows you to have like a really clean spacing. 
So we're going to choose the last frame, go back to the rig and loop. So now we have the, the cape rotating perfectly in a perfect circle and it's looping great. So now what's the next step? Um, again, uh, the, the, ge the geometry, uh, depending on how far you are from the center, you're going to get different effects. So if it's closer, you're going to get uh, the spacing is going to be closer, the spacing of the animation. And if you make that further away from the center, it's going to have bigger spacing between the, the, the frames. So that's going to make it feel faster. So if you want to tweak the speed, also it's a good idea to change how far from the center, you know, being this being the center uh, of your animation is. So uh, let's say I'm just going to make it mm, here more or less. OK, so now we have this rotating, so it's time to bake. So you click on the rig and bake. And now the computer checks a little bit, but that's OK. And every time I bake, uh, let's see the result of it. So we have this rotating motion. And we have all these frames here. I'm going to turn off this because the computer is going to start to get crazy. So we have this rotating and it's perfectly looping. And the reason why the circle works better than the linear is because when you connect the last frame with the first frame, right? This is the connection here right now, the, the last frame from the first frame. When you do a deformation, it will loop seamlessly. It won't have any problem to connect the animation with one another. So let's see what happens now if I do select all frames, select all, and I do a little deformation here. And if you, we're looking at all frames right now, huh? And so let's look at that, what happens there, all right? The deformation goes through all the frames, right and the geometry goes through that deformation and it gives you the feeling that the, the if it looks like a cloth that is kind of hugging this sphere right it's a really nice effect and the good thing about this is that you can make it loop forever and it won't uh you won't see the 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 uh, any jump in the animation so to make this more easy to work with, to make that wind animation, what I'm going to do is, let's turn this off. OK. What I'm going to do is move this guy back into the rotation folder. So now all the rig animation is going to go back into the rotation folder inside of it. So now we have the rig. The rotation folder, the the original ge uh, geometry, which I'm gonna hide, I don't need it for now, and this is the baked animation. So what what that means is, this is rotating because it's baked, and this is also rotating because it's the transform keys. So what happens is turning at double speed, right? It's turning and all, and it's also turning. It's turning twice. So, but, but we don't want that. We want this to be static so I can really animate that wind and, uh, effect. So in order to do that static, it's very simple. Just click on that, click on make this layer transform and go to your transform options and flip. And that's it. You hit play and your and the whole thing is canceled. What does it mean cancel? So this is rotating clockwise. And now this one is rotating counterclockwise. So this is countering this one. And because it's exactly the same rotation, the result, the result is the geometry stays 
stable in one place, right? But we still have all these frames to work with, and we can we can do the deformation. So let's take a look at how that works. Just go here, select all frames, select all, grab tool, and uh, let's say this is the the cape, right? And this is the the where the neck is gonna be of the character. The neck is gonna be here. So I'm gonna start kind of building a little bit of that kind of wind deformation here. And notice that I'm I'm not starting on frame one. I'm just I, I'm just going in the middle because I want to show you guys what happens with the geometry, right? So I'm building this. This is kind of the the sculpture part of it that you you sculpt your deformations. It's recommended not to make it too complex because it starts to get really crazy. But anyway, uh, you see this deformation that I just did, and then we. We move the cursor on the timeline and we can see the result of that wind. Sweet. So now we can start. DJC is asking, would reversing the keyframe layer work too? So basically, reversing the keyframes of the rotation layer. Uh, reversing this? Yes. Yeah, no. no, 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 no. No, because it's uh, oh, you can. I guess you can do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would I found probably work, but it's it's easier to just flip it, right? I just find this so much easier. Just go here, and then you just go there. Boom, two. You can just do that very quickly. So now, what we want also is to have an area of the um, of the cape not being affected by the wind. So I want all the, the I want all the neck area to be hopefully not affected by it. So how do we do that? So it's a little bit more tricky because you have to consider that this is a circular motion. It's doing this circular. So to avoid the this area to be completely affected by the wind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do my deformations only from from the from this area up to here, right? Uh, see if I can undo what I did before. I think. Yeah, I think that's good. So, yeah. Uh, now the computer is chugging a little bit because it's showing you all the frames, but we can do this without seeing the frames. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of continue my my work of just the forming and you have to take care that everything everything that you do is going to affect all the frames not just one frame so now i have this nice s curve but it's gonna it's gonna be applied to all the rest of the frames and see how it affects the the corner of the cave yeah so it's good to kind of Keep keep checking, you know. Look at here; it's it's really nice because the deformation kind of gradually moves over to here. So the 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 bigger deformation need to be on the on the tip of the cape, and over here the deformation should be like smaller, more subtle. So so now it's kind of the the work is just to continue to kind of make sure that it's never flat, so it always has a nice shape to it. And this is like the creative part of it. You just very artistic, you know, your artistic decisions to really make that nice shape and to get that impression of the, the wind blowing on that cave, right? And this is so much fun to do because you immediately see the results. And you can make some parts of the wind a little bit stronger than others. You know, the, the wind is, is not perfectly always the same. So there's like little gust. Sometimes it's a little faster, sometimes a little more subtle. So let's say this area is gonna, gonna make the wind a little bit less strong. And then in the next part, I'm gonna make the wind a little a little bit more pronounced now. And it's all very it's, I love it because it's not like a in other programs in Maya, we have the, the wave deformer. In Maya, you can do a similar effect. 
but this is so much more satisfying because you're sculpting the the actual deformations yourself. No, you change your rhythm. That's kind of difficult. You can you can right change there. the rhythm. You can make it really organic. You know, I'm making sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's a little faster. Like for example, here I'm gonna make it a little bit more strong here. So the the curvature of the the S shape is a little bit more pronounced in some areas. So now here, just make sure that there's never like a flat moment where the cape stays flat. Just kind of always do a little motion, even if it's really tiny. So all of that until we have until we hit frame number one sixty, right? This and. This obviously this creates a lot of frames, a lot of geometry that's, that would probably be unnecessary. But the benefit is that it looks more organic and real and kind of so yeah, it's yeah, it's not opt optimized. <laughs> this technique is not good for making really optimized things, but you can compensate by optimizing other parts of your scene if you want. Uh you can make it work, you know. I think it's worth it. The the extra geometry that you get, and the the the, the for me that's the the magic to me, the fact that it connects perfectly with the rest of the animation, and there's no problem with the the loop. Yeah, important to notice, like especially because you have here like a very graceful um, breeze, right? But if yep. you have like a storm type of thing, oh, you, um, you, you that's thing, right. So you can just do whatever exactly. Like yeah. If you want, if you want faster, it's easier. Uh, you're gonna get less frames. So remember, before I did twenty, that would be for a good, like a, a strong storm. You know, if you yeah. go uh, the increments instead of forty increments, you do twenty frame increments. That means the rotation, the initial rotation is gonna be faster, and these waves are gonna move much faster. So you can get that feeling of a. Uh, like stormy weather, you know, really, you know, violent wind. You know, you, you know, the faster you make it, the the easier it's going to be on the optimization because it's going to be less frames. And uh, the more subtle you want to do it, uh, you're going to use more frames, obviously. Uh, and it's going to it's going to it's going to be more heavy in the the number of triangles that you're going to use um, for this, yeah, right? Like a, yeah, it looks like a cloth simulation. It's amazing. It's just I I love this technique because you can get this really organic effects, right? And and also the fact that I'm doing the the circle means I'm o I'm only deforming this the the tip, like the end part of the cape and the 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 front part of the cape. I'm leaving it completely still because I'm gonna attach that to the character later on, right? But before that, let me show you more things that you can do once we are in this mode. Um, obviously the colors are completely flat because we are in Quill. Uh, if you turn on your your uh, wireframe, you can see that the formation is much better, right? But what if I want to paint a little bit of the shadows that those uh, the formations are creating? Let's do that, right? Let's let's choose a little bit of a darker color here and. Let's say I want to paint here. You know, I'm gonna use the wireframe as a guide to see where the shadow should be. You know, when the when the cape is moving, it's, it's kind of creating this little crease and these little bumps, and these bumps are creating little shadows. So I'm gonna be very subtle with my painting tool. I'm just painting very very subtle uh, changes of color here. You see that. <laughs> And the good thing about this is that the color changes are going to also move with the deformations. And this creates a really cool effect of this kind of shadows moving around in the cape, you know, like you would see in a real cape. So it's, and you can be, again, you can be really creative. Uh, this is something that you do by hand. But look, the, the shadow kind of continues and moves with it, animates already. So it makes it really, really cool and three-dimensional. 
and again if you use the wireframe you can give I can give you a guide of where the shadow should be more or less also the highlights you can also paint a bit of a highlight if you want uh, to give them more volume and more it's kind of very, I would say very subtle with it because yeah it looks better if it's just simple two colors right but it's up to you like totally you can even paint like a texture well I'll tell you how to do that later but um everything we paint now is going to be moving it's going to be animated with the with the wind so it makes sense that these shadows are animated with the wind let's do a little bit of a shadow here a little bit of that you know just paint it over and all these little changes in color are going to translate and, and they're going to move with your deformations which is pretty awesome beautiful so you can tweak that as much as you want Make sure you're always selecting all the frames before you paint, otherwise it's not gonna work. Yeah, they have to be flashing, they have to be make sure that you're selecting every single frame. So look at that. It's just it's so much fun to create these things. And uh, this can work for anything that moves with the wind. It could be the hair, it could be like uh grass or maybe even the canopy of a tree right you can use the same technique and apply it um, but this for especially for the cape is really really useful okay so now we're happy with this let's say that we're happy we like it so to bake it just go back to rick and and bake it and now we're cooking this thing and it's already cooked. And in, in this layer, we have the final result of the cape moving with the wind with the nice shadows in it, moving shadows. But what, what if you want the, uh, once we are in this mode, in this baked result, we can do even more things to, to our cape. We can uh, select all again with all the selected frames uh, checked and the the same coloring thing you can do it but this time it's going to be static so this this shape this change that i'm going to do is going to be static during the whole animation so now let's say let's say i want the, the 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 neck area of the cave i want it a little darker so i can do that and it won't move it will stay there that's that different color right and the same for let's say this cape is a little old and has some sort of decoloration let's you know let's say here is a little bit desaturated for whatever reason so that desaturation will stay always in that area right and the same happens if you want to paint like uh, some sort of a texture that the cape has or maybe a different color Let's imagine. Let's imagine we have something here. It will stay there, and that's awesome because it, it can give you the opportunity to even paint some sort of texture to the cape, like a leopard pattern, <laughs> like a pattern or something like that, and the pattern will deform realistically with the with the wind deformations. You know what I mean? It's just really awesome to do this. So let's let's say we have a pattern, maybe something like that. This cape. I'm completely improvising all of these guys, by the way. I didn't plan these at all. The beauty of freestyling. And look at that. We have this different colors are reacting to to the formations i think there's a moment where it doesn't work because the the, the brush that i used it was pretty small 
so the amount of movement is is pretty big and the brush was really small so i painted here but it yeah, didn't it you didn't register here it, right? you have to paint so it. yeah this is the problem with improvisation <laughs> the, um, but anyway it doesn't matter uh you get the idea you can paint and it will stay there let's say we have something like that and it will stay there okay let's let's just not have a pattern uh next thing that you can do once we are in this mode is Okay, we have the cape, it's moving, but it's not really positioned properly on the character. So let's let's make that cape and put it on the on the neck of the character right there, under uh, like behind. Uh, pretty big, I guess. That's okay. Okay, but now it's obviously it's straight. It's not the way it should be. So thanks to the same technique, you can always select all in all frames. And now when we do the formations, the same with the paint, the, the formations are going to be persistent and static. It's, they're going to be always in all the frames. So now I'm going to get that cape. And now the computer is really going to struggle to do this. But I'm gonna give that cape a general shape that is gonna affect the whole animation, right? And this is awesome because uh, you can, you know, preserve the wind animation and at the same time deform the whole cape and make it the shape you want. So I want this whole thing to be a little bit leaning to to the to the left, like I had before. And I distorted this a lot, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, the geometry is pretty dense. I made it on purpose, pretty pretty strong. Uh, a lot of triangles, so it can resist all this punishing that I'm giving <laughs> to it. Stroke punishing. Yeah, yeah. Punish the strokes. So. As you can see, it's it's completely possible to to make that cape adjust to whatever your needs of your character, right? So in this case, I want this to be hanging in there, like you boot a real cape. Da, 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 da. And you, you're gonna start to see this when you distort a lot. So you're gonna start to see the see the those strokes separating from each other, but that's okay. You can always fix it by just adding a little thickness in there. Let's see how that looks. Nice. All right, so Beautiful. Look, look at that, the shadows moving around. And yeah, there's a little bit of this is breaking a little bit. So the break, so the only way to fix it is just like um, select all and just kind of go in the problem areas, do a little bit of thickness and just kind of fix the little holes if you but that is because i distorted so much you know if you distorted the, the less you distorted the better and a, a good way to distort it um a, a good way to avoid this is to have the cape already in a in a shape before you do the, all the process instead of because i started with a flat cape it's completely flat on the ground uh and that's okay but if you start with the cape already more or less in the in the position you want and it's already on, on the model that will give you a little bit of a better starting point so you don't have to distort so much in, in the end but i wanted to show you guys that you could do it you could do it from 
uh, from uh, starting from a flat cloth and now I actually move the, the cloth and I put it in the right spot on the neck on the character. It's, there's a couple more holes in there, maybe. Uh, oh, I think this, I think we're good. Can you unselect? Yeah. Nice. So yeah, you see those areas where it doesn't move. That's because I didn't add any, I didn't def do any deformation at all. So it depends on what you what you were looking for. But it's, it's recommended to do at least a little bit of sculpting on every part of the cape. Oops, I did the keyframe by mistake. No, no keyframes, please. Yes, record on. Huh? Yeah, that's okay. Record off. Um, let's yeah, let's put it back in the place. And there you have it. And now um, another thing that you can do if you're not happy with the direction, you can always um, reverse the um, all the frames. You hit the wrong reverse, right? Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, reverse here, sorry. So if you reverse here, the wind will go in a different direction in case you're, if, in case you wanna change that, which is pretty cool. Or you can also flip it too. But reverse in this case is pretty useful because you already have the frames baked. You choose this one whoop, and it goes, the way the wind goes in a different direction now. Pretty simple, pretty easy, and as it gives you more flexibility. Uh, what else we can do with this? I think we already did a lot, but we can go even further. <laughs> I mean, we can always go further with Quill. This is the, <laughs> but you can always go further and kind of do a duplicate, right? We have the same animation twice. Select all, right? And then let's say I wanna just quickly boop, 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 boop. But let's just, let's choose a nicer color. Maybe a little darker here. You know, and just like I said, you're always in control. So we have now the two different tones for the same. Although the problem is you still see a lot of this stuff, but can fix you can just fix it by moving it slightly. And there you go. Any questions so far? Don't see any questions in the chat. This is so easy. <clears throat> so so everybody should be able to do it. Every anytime you have a character with wind Alex, hair. I'm asking for if you can click on the performance panel. Oh no, it's gonna be horrible. <laughs> Gonna be horrible. Look at that. <laughs> it's all, all no, but it is is really bad because I have a lot of things. Well, this is also like um a very it's, old illustration, right? Exactly, yeah. And also uh but the actual cape, if we only look at the cape, is 73 oh, K yeah. each one, but we can always take a quick a quick optimization pass to, to just the one layer, and it's 22 k now. And twenty one on the on the other one. So if we look at that, it still looks good. Yeah. In this case, the overdraws would be a bigger problem. If you duplicate the cape and put it behind the current cape, then you know you have tons of strokes overlapping, and that would be a problem more so than the density of the polygons, right? 
Well, well, can you say that again? The overdraws? Yeah, overdraws are like overlapping strokes. Like for example, oh, if you yeah. have a of grass, or if you have if you duplicate the cape and multiple times and uh, behind each other, so they overlap. Oh. That would be a problem. Oh, okay. And the poly count because the poly count seems to be pretty good. But let's say you duplicate the cave twice just behind it. Mm -hmm. it might still pass optimization, but it might not run smoothly on mobile because it just oh, okay. tries to compute every overlap behind it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man. yeah. So but for this, it works. What else we can do with this? Let me show you. I have a couple of examples here. We can do a flag. Nice. And look at that flag. It's a 59, uh, hang on. yeah, 59K. Let's look at the geo. Pretty dense, mm -hmm. but we can always take a pass of optimization and it becomes 18. And it looks pretty organic still. And how I did the flag is a little different because uh, the, uh, the cape uh, here, the wind is going in, in this direction, right? Instead of um, sideways. Huh? sideways. Uh, in the case of the flag, it's a little bit more tricky the way I did this because the wind is going in the same direction as the, the length of the flag. And this area, I wanted it to be completely still. So that's pretty tricky to do. I can show you guys how I did that. Uh, let's go back to the rig. And I'm afraid we're going to say goodbye to this cape. We don't need it anymore. Bye bye. And we're going to start from scratch again because I want to show you how you can do that flak. Um, okay. So we are starting from scratch now. We having we have the rotation. This, I don't need this, okay. So the flak. Okay. So we need, the, we need the geo to be a little bit further from the center. Just gonna make it a little smaller. Okay, pretty, I think that's that should be good. It's gonna be a little faster wind, but that's okay. So in order to make that flag, so we want the the wind to go this way instead of um in the, instead of that way. I, actually, sorry the the neck the uh, the in in the cape the neck was here so that that area was static so that was good. But in the flag I want this to be the neck I want this to be the static part. And to have this as the static part is kind of hard because all the deformations that I do. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move in this direction, and it's gonna be. This is gonna be affected. So let's pick, let's pick this out and show you what I mean. Bake it, move it back into the rotation, hide the original, and this one we're just gonna go and flip. And somebody has the mic on, please. Uh, that's, that's a lot of noise coming in. Yeah, I don't know who is. Somebody, somebody has the mic on. It's making a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah, I think I hear people talking. <laughs> yeah, I muted. It. Sorry. I, I, I can still hear it. Ah, uh, I muted him. I can still. Mm, I can still hear it. That's, that's crazy. Really? Uh, for me, it's quiet. Uh, why am I hearing it? Uh, maybe because I, I have to do the server mute now. 
Oh, there you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I meant is, if you're gonna do a flag and you want this part to be static, it's really hard because if you do, um, let's do uh, select all. Let's do here, and if you do this deformation, the whole the whole cloth is gonna move, and it, this area is not gonna be static. Let's do it again to show you what I mean. Right. So it's very hard to keep one part of the flag uh, static in the case of you want to do this stuff a flag. So let's let's delete that and start over and I'll show you how we can do this. And the easiest way to do this, I realize, and Jari probably has a better solution. So this is the direction of the wind, right? So I'm going to select the original geo, geo. And with the grab tool, I'm just going to bend it. Just going to bend it upwards, right? I'm going to try to make this really a simple move, just a one move like that. Boom. There you go. Just like a, almost like a 90 degree angle. And this is not going to be super perfect, but the good thing is we're going to be able to keep that pretty static. So let's move it a little bit higher up. Okay, so now we have this kind of 90 degree angle pretty much. And let's go back and bake it again. Brick, bake. Once it's baked, move, move it down, back into the rotation, select the bake, transform, flip, and hide the original geo. geo. And now we have, oh, it didn't work. What have I done? Did I flip it? Oh, I, I I went too fast and I, I I broke something. So now, right, bake, yes, do, do, do. Now we go here, flip, and there you go. That's what a that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so now we are we are in the editing mode, let's say. And, and now for the people that um, are wondering why that thing is moving slightly and jiggling is just because um, if you use transform keyframes, interpolation are interpolating between oh, yeah. keyframes at your headset uh, speed, and then he put a twenty-four frames per second layer underneath, so um, it doesn't match perfectly because like the Transform keyframes are like basically interpolating at a faster frame rate. Exactly. But once you bake it, that jiggle disappears because then you combine it again to 24 frames per second. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like uh, even if you go frame by frame here, if you click here on the joystick, you don't see the jiggle because we're jumping from one frame 25th, you know, from one frame to the next, right? But if you hit play, uh, Quill plays the transform key animation at a higher uh, frame rate than 24 frames per second. And there is a, a conflict between the higher frame rate of this and a lower frame rate of this. And that's why it kind of jiggles a little bit when I play now. But it doesn't matter because when we bake it, it will all become 24 frames per second. So back to the deformation, we we select this, select all frames, select all, grab tool. So now we are doing the same process as we did before. Start to do the S shapes, right? To get that flag to move like a flag. But all I'm doing is being careful not to do a higher movement like this. Just try to keep it here, 
so it doesn't affect this area. You see that? So now the deformation, it's it the the the, the top of the deformation is going to be here. That's the maximum of the deformation, so you won't touch these areas. So now I'm able to do this waving and not affect this part, right? So let's keep going. You basically so, isolated a section by bending it up. Exactly. And the good thing is I'm completely able to bring that back to, to the shape I want later. So, so very careful not to do grab tool in this part, only grab tool in this part. So when you when you when you press on the trigger, when you grab tooling, make sure that you are in this lower section. And you can always draw a guide if you want. You can have another layer here. For example, you, you want to have a layer and say, OK, I'm just going to have this guide just to, to remind myself never to, to deform higher than that, right? So, so we can just keep playing and deforming this thing. Oops. So I have to go here, select all. And I'm kind of a sculpt. Do, 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 do. Just make sure it looks nice and smooth. You can play with the wind, like maybe there's different intensities on in this part of the flag is a little more, and this one is a little bit different. You can make it pretty organic if you want. You can make these kind of bumps inside of the flag. Sometimes when the flags are very thin, the cloth, you have these bumps, right? And in the wind is kind of going through that. It's creating these little bumps. So you can you can really do that very realistic. Let's make that flag really cool, nice wind. You know, the more the more little bumps that you do, if it, it kind of feels more real almost. Or like a more like a like a wind that is more random. More like a blizzard almost. Like a it's not like a soft wind. I mean you have to experiment with all this to get different effects, right? But notice how I my hand is always carefully moving only on this side on the lower part of that bar that I that I established to myself. And I'm very randomly creating these little deformations. Because sometimes I like that kind of randomness on the on the wind. No, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. It has to be really unpredictable and, and that's the cool thing about it. Just for time check, you're almost at the hour mark. Oh, okay. perfect, perfect, because there's not much more <laughs> that I can show. But this is, I think this is interesting in case you need that flag or maybe a ponytail on a character that has um, long hair. You want the top, the, the 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 part of the geometry that's attached to the head, you want that to be static. So this is a way to keep things static. So. Bear with me since I finish this. It's going to look really cool and organic. It's very small deformations, but they look pretty, pretty good. Just make, make sure there's a nice S, S shape to it. You can always make that a little different here. Do, 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 do. So much fun to do this. And soon we're gonna get to the end of the, the of the loop. And obviously this is takes a longer time because it's one uh, 160 frames. But if you do faster. It's gonna take it's gonna take a longer uh, shorter time. It's gonna take less because it's gonna be less amount of frames, right? All right, so we have all these 160 frames of movement. 
let's get rid of that uh, bar that we don't need it anymore. And let's bake all of this. Well, let's maybe we can paint a little shadows now since we're here because later we're not going to be able to do it. So I don't need to see all the frames. So let's paint a little bit of the shadows here. Very fast. Oops. Kind of a... Can you hide the wireframe real quick so we can see the color? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. The wireframe is only as a guide for me to to see where. But I can use this uh, preview as well too. So this is super cool because you, all these bumps, they have these three three dimensions to it, and you can just paint a little bit of the shadow there, so it will make it really realistic. The bump really has this kind of cast shadow on it. So you can see how it looks. The good thing about the this preview thing is when you move your hand outside, it, it turns off. And when you move your hand inside, you, you, you see the wireframe again. It's pretty cool. And you can go pretty fast with this because just paints all the frames at once. All right, almost there. And there we have it. I think you have an empty frame somewhere. Oh, do I? Yeah, you. if you look at your timeline, there's one empty frame. Oh, no. I think How you just, it? if you go back to the beginning in the timeline. Oh, you shit. Well, you oh, just oh. have to delete that one, right? I think you might have okay. just. Is still yeah. there? Is the animation still the same length, though? It should yeah. be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's all good now. Yeah. It's all good. Okay, so now, okay, let's see. I uh, I finished the shadows. I like the deformations. Let's bake it again. Select the rig, bake it, and now, uh, like I did with the cape. You can do permanent deformations, right? And we're gonna use that permanent deformation to get the get the flag back to a normal shape, and to get that you know the the ninety degree angle that we did, we just put it back into place. So now we have a proper shape flag with the deformations only affecting. one part of the flag, and this one is static. So we can have uh, here, I can just do the... <laughs> so Daniel, Nino is asking, could you somehow approach a flag with a simple symbol on it in a similar way, or is it impossible because it is all moving? No, you can actually do a symbol if you want. Um, we can use the same rig to put the symbol in the geo area. It's better to do the symbol before you deform it. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You can, you have to do it before you deform, before you do all the waving deformations. You have to plan for it. You just have to um, plan for it beforehand. And then yeah, exactly. The, the another thing that you can do is, for example, let's say we want this to be the Spanish flag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's also select this here. Okay, 
let's say we, we want this to be the Spanish flag, so the center color is kind of a yellow like that, I think. Go to um, color mode. I think that's better. Undo. Go to color sorry. mode. Oh, yeah, because I will keep the, the shadows, right? All oh, right. Top, bottom yeah. right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There you go. So now I'm changing the color of that whole area. And now I have a Spanish flag. Deforming realistically with the shadows and the deformations. And again, you can always uh, select all again, and you can do maybe with burn, just kind of uh, do like a permanent change on the color, right? Like a little bit darker here. And if you use dodge, you can have a little bit brighter in the, in the sunset. Yeah, you can give give the effect that the light is coming through or something like that. That looks great. I love it. Yari, you're like fifty I kilometers love. away. <laughs> Your voice is so. Well, bright. I think yeah, I think Yari has a has a really cool technique. He's gonna explain um, in the in his stream. But this is my my version of what Yari was doing. I hope you guys like it. It's pretty powerful what you can do. Uh, the only downside is this the circle thing. Uh, you have to deal with the with the fact that it's a circle, so you have to do this kind of tricks with the what I did with the angle, ninety degree angle. And the other bad thing is that it generates a lot of geometry, and that could be a bad thing too. It's not optimized, but the the results are really realistic, as you can see. And I want to show you guys before I finish the the stream. I want to show you something I, an experiment that I did. And <laughs> I want you guys to tell me what you think of it. So <laughs> this is the same techniques that I show you guys, but applied twice in two different directions. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I wanted to see how that would work, and like you create this. Like you can you can get these really crazy organic effects. Basically, what I did is bake it, and then once it was baked, I put it back into the rig, and I flip it, <laughs> and I change the direction, and I rebake it. Um, and then take it back and then put it back again and bake it again. <laughs> so we have two different directions of the formation colliding with each other. Multi-pass baking. Multi-pass baking. And you can get this feeling of water, you know, like a water boiling. Or, or you can get other different effects with it. So I encourage you guys to experiment and be crazy with this. And also the colors are really cool. You can just get this all these little colors and tones to collide with each other. Anyway, I hope you guys like this technique. I think it's pretty cool. Super cool. Really Thanks cool. so much for sharing. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Oh, I'm going to read it. The, There's the no chat. questions right now. Oh, no yeah. question? Yeah, okay, everything. Keeping an eye on it, so. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here. Thank you, Daniel. Thank uh, you. Great. You're welcome. See you later. See bye bye. You.